Hey, I'm Pastor Bruce, in case we haven't met. Uh, welcome to Authentic Life Church, and happy Father's Day. Okay, so didn't Danny already talk to you about this? I go, it's very appropriate to go happy Father's Day back to me, okay? Happy Father's Day. Thank you, thank you, because otherwise I feel like I've kind of been left out or things like that. Hey, uh, glad you guys are here today. Why don't you grab a Bible or a device, and let's turn to Mark chapter 10, and we're going to start with verse 13, but Mark chapter 10, and uh, uh, we're going to be looking at a, a very cool passage that's going to teach us a lot today as we grow in the Lord and things like that. Hey, uh, Father's Day can bring a bunch of stuff to mind. For some, it can bring up anger, if we're, if we're, if we're honest, because uh, maybe you had a, a, a bad dad, or he hurt you, or, or uh, you're frustrated because uh, your husband uh, left the family, and, and you just got some anger in you. Uh, others can feel guilt, you know, as dads, like maybe you feel like you haven't been the best dad, or some other struggles in, in going on in your life, or or maybe you yourself feel like you haven't been a great child to your dad, or haven't honored your father, so you have a sense of guilt there. And then there's others that just really sense of pride. Hey, I'm a dad, you know, and I, I feel great. I love this. Well, today we're not going to be able to do a lot about that first one, about the anger and things uh, dealing with that. But, but we can try to move us all into a place of where we can uplift fathers and be uplifted um, if you are a father. I realize half this room is not, more than half this room is not a dad. And so I think we can gain a lot about our relationship with the Heavenly Father today and also our relationship um, with uh, our dads or the dads in our life and things like that. Hey, today, uh, the title, if you have your sermon notes, is uh, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Do you remember there was a show with, with Jeff Foxworthy uh, a couple years back, and it was Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? And what would happen is, is there'd be these contestants. And actually, when they, when they were being stumped by a question, and every question was something that would be on a fifth grade test. And if they got stumped, there was actually fifth graders that would uh, give them their lifeline, and they could ask questions, and then the fifth grader would help them out and things like that. So it was kind of funny. But uh, there'd be questions like this. How many teaspoons in five tablespoons? Now, I'll give you a, a hint. There's three teaspoons per tablespoon. So if there's five tablespoons, 15 would be the answer. But if all of a sudden you miss the question or you're at the very end of the show and you didn't get the money, the person would have to look into the camera and, and say, my name is Joe Schmo, and I am not smarter than a fifth grader. That's how, that's how it ended. And well, you know what? Today what we're going to learn and what we're going to be talking about is really that kind of question. Jesus is going to uplift childlike faith, which is kind of good because I haven't really matured since I was in fifth grade myself. But, but what we're going to look at is this question. Are you smarter than a fifth grader, faith-wise? Are, are you actually looking at life properly through the eyes that God wants us to have through the faith eyes of a child. So I think in order to be a great dad, you need to learn how to be a great child of God. To be a great dad, to be a great parent, to be a great person, we need to learn how to be a great child of the Most High God. So today is all about saying Happy Father's Day to God. Uh, today is all about learning to have the faith that is simple, the one that Jesus lifts up. So let's begin this time in prayer. Father, we thank you for drawing us here today. And Lord, we ask that you would, would move within us, stir within our hearts, that we would be different today uh, after we leave here than we were when we came in because we get to know you better. At the same time, Lord, we want to lift up our hearts to you and say happy Father's Day. Uh, we love you. We want to bless you this day. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Okay, Mark chapter 10. Uh, and we're going to start with verse 13, if you guys are there. And it says this, and this is Jesus uh, coming, coming, he's with a group of people. And it says, during, verse 13, people were bringing their little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on him, on them. But the disciples actually rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, 
Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms and he placed his hands on them and he blessed them. Okay, so basically we need to have, uh, to please our heavenly father, need to have a, a sense of childlike faith in, in a really real world that we can learn a lot from children. So what are we gonna learn from children? Our first point is this, is that our relationship with God is meant to be simple. I mean, we have a tendency to complicate things, but this is what, this is what God did. Jesus, Jesus gathered these children unto him. And, and again, what Jesus always did is he lifted up those that the culture pushed down. I mean, the culture of that time pushed women down. Jesus constantly was lifting women up. The Bible constantly is lifting women up. Uh, the culture lifts down the poor. Uh, Jesus lifts up the poor. The culture lifts down the foreigner. Jesus lifts up the foreigner. The culture pushes down the cripple and, and the handicapped and things like that, people like that, and Jesus lifted them up. And here again, he brings a child that the culture pushed down. It was definitely, children should not even be seen or heard in that culture of that time, and Jesus lifts it up. And he lifts up in such an extent that he actually says, hey, this, this child, you wanna know how to enter the kingdom of God? It's like this child. See, here's what the Pharisees, which were religious leaders of the day, and actually even the disciples believed this, that knowledge of God, knowledge of scripture is what made God love you more. That God loves those who have great knowledge. But what Jesus brought out, he said, no, God does not love or bless those who have great knowledge. God blesses the person with childlike Faith, simple faith is really what he did. That's what he was doing. It was a great lesson. Second Corinthians uh, 5, 7 says, for we live by faith, not by sight. Hey, can, can you all say that out loud together with me? Okay, ready? For we live by faith, not by sight. You know, we, we wanna have sight for everything. We wanna have proof for everything. But listen, I believe there's so much proof about God, so we're not gonna get into that discussion. But, but basically this, I may not actually be able to see God yet. One day I will see him face to face. But right now I may not be able to see him, but I can see the effects of God all the time. I see him in creation. I see him in new life. I see him in change life. We just watched it through baptism. People don't do that. You know, it's God, the effects of God, the transformation, people getting out of addictions all over the place. It's amazing. And not just what's going on here, but all around the world. So I might not always be able to see God. I mean, well, I haven't seen, seen him, but I certainly see the effects and I know the effects. And honestly, I love it through my childlike faith. And I pray that that'd be the same for you. Um, your, your, uh, to, to hear dads today, you kind of hear that, uh, ever heard that statement that's, that goes, you know, when, when my kids were growing up, uh, they, they thought I was the smartest and, and the greatest person and I knew everything. Then they became teenagers and all of a sudden I, I know nothing, right? You know that? I, I think we kind of do that. Uh, you know, when, you, when, when you're a kid, you just kind of go, Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible. You know, it's just so innocent. And something happens in puberty. I mean, all hell breaks loose in pu puberty, right? <laughs> but, but all of a sudden, we decide that we're smarter. And eventually it gets to a place where all of a sudden it's like, we know more than God. And therefore, God becomes irrelevant in our life. Most don't ever get to the place where they don't believe in him, but they see him as irrelevant. What, what, a, what a wrong place to be. No, Jesus is saying, keep that innocent. Do you want to be a good father? Then this is what you need to do. You need to be somebody who lives out your faith and passes it on to your children. And I don't care what age your kids are. I don't care if they're adults. I don't care if you're a grandparent or whatever. Pass on your faith, the simple faith, childlike faith to your children. And on the other hand, also, you want to please your heavenly father? Happy Father's Day. Love him innocently. Love him simply. Love him with a childlike faith, very much so. You know, uh, when I became a dad, <clears throat> lots of things changed in my life. I mean, all of a sudden, I'm now changing diapers. 
you know, and things when you become a dad. And I just spent this whole weekend with my little two-year-old nephew. You know, we had him over, babysitting him for a couple days. And boy, oh boy, changing diapers reminded me why I stopped having children after two. I mean, I don't know what happened. I don't know if he didn't poop for like four days, but man, right when I got him, a load just shot out. I'm thinking that's gotta be twice his body weight was inside that diaper. I, it was something, and it stinketh. It really was. It was. I was like, dude, what are you? Are you just a little tyke? And, but the load, I mean, I thought, man. Uh, but, but it reminded me uh, you know, of, of a love that I have for this little kid. That I'm, As I'm wiping all this stuff, I'm thinking, I must love you, you know? And, 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 I, and I do. But a lot of things changed once I became a, a father. Uh, changing diapers, changing, changing my heart. But one thing I realized I really had to do is I had to get to a place um, to where I wanted to pass on my faith. All of a sudden, it hit me when I became a dad. I'm responsible for a lot of things. Yeah, food, shelter, those things. But really, the most important is my faith. Dads, you want to know it's great that you're earning money. It's great that you have shelter. It's great that you love your, your spouse, your wife. It's, all those things are good and you're needed. But I'm here to tell you, if you're not figuring out how to pass on and pass off your faith, you need to do that. And it doesn't need to be complicated because the faith that Jesus uplifts is actually a simple faith. Uh, remember that acronym, KISS, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid? <laughs> Hear that, keep it simple. And don't mean to call you stupid, but, but keep it simple, slugger. You know, whatever, uh, uh, something like that. So how are you doing at passing on your faith? How are you doing at passing off your faith to your kids? I'm not saying it's easy and they're responsible for their own faith in a sense, but are you living it out? Are they seeing a good example? Are they seeing somebody that they would like to emulate? Are they at least watching that? Are you visualizing? Do you ever pray with them? Do you ever talk to them about God? Do you ever bring up these things? It doesn't need to be, you don't need to have rocket science degree. You don't. You just need to live, live it out loud in a good way. Mark chapter 10, verse 14. If you want to look at that verse, it's in your, uh, up on the screen. Let the little children come to me and do not what? Do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Dads, even moms, in fact, everybody, do not hinder your child's faith by not living it out. Do not hinder it by putting rules that God never put in place. I think we make up a bunch of rules that seem godly. And we put our thumb down on some of our children and they're kind of going, what, what's that? Jesus wants it to be simple, childlike, wonderful faith that Jesus uplifted in a child. So really the question for each of us is, are you smarter than the fifth grader? Uh, faith smart. That's as simple as he wants it. Let's go on to point number two. Well, before we do that, let's, can we look at verses 15 and 16 uh, together? It says, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Those are some pretty radical words. Let me say that again. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And then he took the children in his arms, he placed his hands on them, and he Bless them. Point number two is God's kingdom is received and not earned. You want to know how to say happy Father's Day to God? Realize that. You cannot earn your salvation. You can only receive it. Jesus is very specific. And you don't receive it with all this complex thing. You receive it like a little child. Just accepting it. You know, and just believing. That's how you get to heaven. That's a big deal. And we, got, we keep complicating things. And we keep making them harder and harder. And Jesus just goes, no, no, no. Unless you receive it like a little child, you will never enter it. You know, um, I, I wasn't a dad uh, until I, uh, my little daughter, Corey, was conceived and, and born. You know, now I was there at conception. It was pretty awesome. You know, it was, it was, it was cool. And thank you very much. And, and I would, I would uh, look at my wife's belly and I'd go, man, I did that. 
That's awesome. But my, my little daughter was, was growing inside my wife's belly. And, and I, I don't know, she's partying in there, hanging out in the water, uh, you know, and eating and just kind of having whatever they do in this little dark place. But as she's going through that time of, 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 of going, it took nine months for me to actually ever see her. I mean, we had a little sonogram thing, but that was like, I think in our day, it was like, rum, rum, rum. that's what you heard. Rum, 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 rum. I'm like, that's my kid. You know, that's pretty awesome. But, but uh, I didn't really uh, get the whole concept of what, being a father until she popped out, you know. Well, she didn't really pop out. Uh, it was a complicated birth, ended up being an emergency C-section and things like that. But man, oh man, it was so cool all of a sudden becoming a dad. And that even though uh, the, uh, uh, the, the whole process of birthing and all these things, it was when she finally came out, when she was born, that I saw her. But let me tell you what Jesus wants from us and what he tells us. He says, you need to be born again. Now I know that for some of you, you're like, what the heck? Do I have to go back up in there? That's actually what Nicodemus says in John chapter three. He goes, he goes what do you mean born again? How do I do that possibly? And Jesus says this, he says, no, no, you need to be born of the spirit. You were born the first time physically, but it isn't until you're born again born of the spirit, that you actually can enter new life, enter the kingdom. You gotta be born again. You know, here's my daughter. She comes out and all of a sudden she went from darkness into light. She went from uh, just hanging out in a little pool of water in my wife's belly to all of a sudden seeing a whole new world, uh, taking a line from Aladdin, you know. But, but it was a, a, a great experience for her. Traumatic, in a sense, for my wife uh, having to go through that, but so great when she came out. And that's what Jesus says. He goes, you must be born again, born of the Spirit. And, and, and to do this, you just need to accept what Jesus said. Now, this is grace. You want to know what grace is? Grace means undeserved gift. You know, uh, uh, another one, thinking of pardon, undeserved pardon. Um, like when a president pardons uh, people just prisoners or something like that, for no reason. They didn't deserve it. They just get pardoned. Um, but that's also what God does. As he sits down and says, you didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. You can only receive it. To be born again is really, truly just to receive salvation. Uh, a good buddy of mine in high school was named Dana Hess. And uh, he, he was a gas station attendant for about a year of his life. And uh, we grew up in a small mountain town in Southern California. So it was like we had no street lights, nothing like that. And so people back in those days, they didn't have GPS. So that, remember uh, some of those us that are older, you would stop by a grocery store or a gas station and ask for directions. So we were a mountain town. We'd have weekenders come up. That's what we called people that were visiting and staying in a cabin. And, and they would always go to his gas station. And he thought it would be the funniest thing because they'd always ask for directions. Uh, how do I get to Main Street? And he'd look at them and go, sorry, man, you can't get there from here. And, and they would look oh my gosh, you can't get there from here. You know, and he'd go, ah, just joking. Here's what you do. You take a left over here and you get to Main Street. Well, when we drive up and we go into the lane that says, earn my salvation, doing something to get to heaven, and we sit there and go, God, what do I have to do? How do I earn salvation? How do I, I make my, uh, 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 please you enough that you would actually maybe get me into heaven? And God says, you can't get there from here. Th this lane doesn't work. Nope. You can only receive it. You can't earn it. You can only receive it. You want to give the Heavenly Father a happy Father's Day? Have a childlike faith. And, and I'm here to tell you, right, most of you are believers in here. I know some, some are not. And you're searching today. And, and you kind of go, okay, this is a simple sermon. Yeah, on purpose. But I want you to also understand something. That the, the whole concept of becoming a uh, believer and giving God a happy Father's Day is not constantly trying to battle him by trying to earn his love. He already loves you unconditionally. He already adores you. And if you just keep thinking you have to do this and do that, you are sadly mistaken. A way to say happy Father's Day is to say, I believe you. God, I believe everything you've told me. I receive it. And I receive it well. See, understand, Jesus brought a child in front of everybody and said, you must have faith like this. He didn't bring a nurse 
and said, you must serve like her in order to get to heaven. He, he didn't bring a professor and say, you must have knowledge like him to, to get to heaven. He didn't bring a lawyer. Well, that would have just been silly. But he, 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 he didn't do that. He brought a child. And he says, you must have faith like her. You must have faith like this child. Again, Mark 10, 15 through 16 says, truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive, did you see that? It didn't say anybody who doesn't earn, anybody who doesn't work hard, anybody who doesn't serve their tails off. It says anybody who does not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will, not, will never enter it. It's really salvation is this door that you walk through to be born again. It's saying, hello world. I'm, I'm a believer. You know, uh, Jesus is not saying that children are innocent. We like to say that all the time. Trust me, I just was with a two-year-old for a couple days. <laughs> oh, man, the terrible twos are alive and well, okay? And they turn into the terrible teens, and then they go into terrible 20s and terrible 30s. I mean, we really don't change. I mean, uh, at two years old, the world revolves around you. I want this. No, give me that. I want to eat. No, I'm not going to eat that. Throws a bowl, right? And we really don't change. What you and I need to do and need to understand is God loves you whether you're a terrible two, terrible teen, terrible 20, terrible 30, and it just gets terrible after that even more so, you know, and stuff. But God loves you. Um, last week, we, you know, we always do uh, uh, where we ask people to receive Jesus uh, at the end of the sermon. And last week, we had five people uh, receive Christ, which is awesome, right? But there was a, a young man, he was 30 years old in, in the third row over here. And he stood out to me. I mean, he put his hand up, but he was, he was visibly shaking from crying as he lifted up his hand. And we prayed the prayer. And uh, uh, afterwards, I'm walking down the aisle, and I just happened to be right with him. And I go, hi, what's your name? And he goes, Philip. And I looked at him, he still had tears in his eyes. And I go, oh, you're the guy that just received the Lord. And he goes, yeah. He goes, this is unbelievable. He goes, I've never experienced anything like this. And we talked a little bit more. And then on Wednesday, I called him. I call everybody who fills out a, I try to call everybody who fills out a, a newcomer card. And I called him up and I couldn't remember the, the name. And I said, you know, he said, Philip. And he said, thank you so much. I go, oh wait, you're the guy that received Jesus. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, I'm telling you, I, I don't know what's going on. Um, I live in California, so I won't be able to go to your church, but I don't know how to find a church. And so I explain how to find a church. And, and he goes, everything changes. I go, he goes, even the way I'm thinking is changing. And, and then, and then I, I said this. I said, hey, we gave you a Bible, right? And he goes, yeah. And I go, could you start reading your Bible? He goes, I already have. I've already had John chapter 10. And I thought to myself, in three days, he's read more than a lot of people read. And, 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 and his innocence and this, this childlike faith that, as he was talking to me, and he goes, he said, I've already liked you on Instagram and on Facebook. <laughs> and, and I said, awesome. I go, have you liked our, our, our page? Because I said, you can get sermons. And he goes, oh, how do I get sermons? I go, just like our Facebook page or, or um, go to our website. And he goes, yeah, I want to watch sermons. And, and, and I thought as I hung up, I mean, I literally went to the staff and if he, uh, staff members were getting teary-eyed and stuff because it was so cool. And I go like this, here's the question. Do you think Philip knows all the really deep theologies of Christianity? No. Do you think he really understands sanctification and justification? No. Do you think he really gets the whole complexity of why Jesus actually died on that cross and how God became flesh and all that? Does he really get all that? No. But he's going to be in heaven with us because he has childlike faith. Faith like a child that just said, I hear it, I believe it, that settles it. Right? Amen? Amen. And, and, and dads... Dads and moms and everybody, parents, whatever you are, understand that that's the faith that we're to pass on. But that's also the faith that we are to have. You want to please your heavenly father? Happy Father's Day, God. Then you need to have faith like a child. Real faith, true faith. But it doesn't have to be the deepest of faith, though I want you to grow. But it just needs to be like that. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Unconditional love God has given to us. And you know what? I didn't really understand unconditional love until I became a dad. 
You know, when, when my daughter came out, and she was a, uh, it was an emergency C-section, so I could not be in there. But uh, they brought her out to me. And oh my gosh, she had this little beanie on her head. And she just was like, and the beanie was, her little ears were kind of pushed down with this beanie and stuff. And she had these big saucers of eyes, like the largest pools of eyes I've ever seen. And I held her, this little seven pound, six ounces. And I thought to myself two things. The first one was, oh my gosh, she looks like E.T., that was, the first, that, was, uh, that, that was my first, first thought. I was like, oh my gosh, we birthed this, the cutest little, little extraterrestrial. And, and, and then, but the second thought I had was, I love this little girl, and I would die for her. Amen. I would die for her. And, and, and as time went on, there's many ways she could attest that unconditional love. I mean, she came out with, with pain to my wife and things like that. And to be honest, there, throughout her life, there was lots of those things. There's those moments. Anybody who's been a parent, I mean, it's not easy uh, to do that. But unconditional love never seems to stop, does it? It's like, that's my daughter. And nothing is going to change that. She can't do anything to stop my love. And even though she was pooping and crying, it was all about her, and in a, in a real sense, it's still like that. But my golly, I love her, and I would die for her. She is my child. And same with my son, you know? And honestly, this, you want to get to, you want to, uh, you get to know my kids, you're going to see a lot of me in them. And I think that when you understand the unconditional love of what it means to be a dad, to be a parent, you better understand the unconditional love of God. Just as you would never write off your kid, God never is going to write off you. Just as you would die for your kid, God took the cross and died for you so that you could be born again, that you could enter the kingdom. It's not complicated. He did everything. You don't have to do anything because he already dead. You just need to receive it like a child, childlike faith. Dads, you want to be a good dad? Reveal unconditional love. You want to be a good dad? Don't put a bunch of rules that don't make any sense about your Christian faith. Live it out. Love it out. And live it out loud. That's what it means to be a dad. Happy Father's Day. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for today, this day, to celebrate not just fatherhood, but to celebrate you, O oh Heavenly Father. And Lord, it is not easy to be a dad. It's not easy to be a parent. It's just not easy to be a person often in life. But thank you for the reminder that to step into light, to step out of darkness and stepping into light is as simple as believing. Thank you that you did not make it complex, but you did make it simple. Thank you that you love us unconditionally so that we also can love others unconditionally. Thank you for the love you have for us, we, we, we pray. Now our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If today you're saying, hey, I, I haven't received Jesus and I wanna do that. I, I, I need to step in. Thank you that, that I realize it's not complicated. It's, it's a childlike faith and I want to receive what God has for me. Maybe you walked away. Maybe you're like some of these baptisms that we had that you walked away and today you want to commit your life, recommit and receive Jesus as Savior. Uh, could you just lift up your hand real quick? I'm not going to call you up. I'm just going to pray for you right there in your seat. So today, I want to receive Christ. Could you lift your hand? You see that? Anybody else? Say, today is the day of salvation. I see that over there, little child. Anybody else? I see that. A couple more hands. Just lift them up high so I can see. So, about three. Okay, good. Go ahead and put your hands down. This is all you have to do. Again, it's simple. Just pray this prayer in your heart after me. Jesus, come into my life. I ask you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Now I want to live for you. I receive you now. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Let's give a hand. Three people receive Jesus. 
Hey, we'd like to know uh, the, the decision you made. And if you could take a card and just put down in there, put your name and say that you received Jesus, we'd, we'd, we'd love to uh, help you along on your journey. And you can, uh, we already took offering, but there's a, a black box that's over there that you can put that in on your way out. I'm gonna do something right now and we're gonna uplift fathers in, a, in another way. And so if you're a dad, um, that also includes being a grandpa. I think we have somebody here that's a great, great, uh, great grandpa. And I, 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 did I hear somebody is a great, great grandfather today? Is anybody? Is anybody a great, great grandfather? Could you stand up? It might be slow, but. <laughs> Actually, let's have all dads. If you're a dad, grandpa, whatever, great. Could you stand up? Come on, stand up if you're a dad. Okay, stay standing. Uh, you just got a, a little place of honor because uh, that is awesome. Thanks for all you are and all you do. But now I'm gonna ask you to come forward and I'm gonna do a, a pastoral prayer for you as a father because uh, like we know, it can kick our tails. And, and we're living in a culture right now that's actually becoming anti-fathers. But we wanna uplift fatherhood and all you are. So if you're a dad, could you come forward right here and come on over and uh, we're going to wrap around this whole thing. Come forward. Come on over to here. Look at all these dads, man. Woo! Keep coming. Squish in. I know dads don't like to touch each other. Uh, men, come all the way. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I, want you, I want you right up here. Let's go. We have a lot of dads. Oh my gosh. We have a lot of dads. Wow. Keep coming. Well, I guess we just saw 100 children up on stage. They got here somehow, didn't they? Keep coming, keep coming. You guys, can you get over? Uh, get, see, keep, come, keep coming over here. There's a lot of people behind you. Wow, pretty cool. Hey, uh, not only are you a father or a dad, and that's a big deal, okay? And I know for some of you, uh, we, we, if you're like me, there's moments that we feel like we've missed in our fatherhood. We could wish we had do-overs. Um, you know, it's never too late to keep pouring in, keeping faith simple. It's just never too late. Just be a dad. Just be a lover. Love unconditionally. But I also know as fathers, um, uh, we can not just have regrets, but we also have some pride. And I'm glad that you do. And you want to have that. What I, what I want to do right now is I want to pray for you. And so I'm going to ask for all of you to put both hands on somebody, another man that's there. It's signifying that you're laying hands on somebody. If you're the last person in line, sorry. Uh, um, but put your hand and say, and that's kind of what, what we are is, do you remember Jesus said he put his hands on the children to bless them? What you're doing is you're blessing the man next to you. That's what you're saying. Everybody else, if you can put your hand out, signifying that you're joining in this blessing. And let's just pray for blessing upon these dads. God, we come together uh, as men, thanking you for the gift that you've given us of fatherhood. And yes, we have some regrets, but thank you, God, that your love covers over a multitude of sins, a multitude of regrets. You say you cast them as far as the east is from the west. So right now, we have victory. We are casting our regrets as far as the east is from the west. They are removed. We are living in the life that you've called us to live. We wanna be men of blessing, men of encouragement, men that are living a life well. And we thank you, God, for the privilege of being dads. Thank you that we can walk with our heads up high as a dad. Thank you for that gift. And now, Lord, we also pray for the men to our right and to our left, those in front of us and those behind us. Oh, Lord God, we, we, we ask that you would bless us, that you would give us even more and more victory, and that we could continuously stand tall. Give us victory with the things that we see. Give us victory with the things we say. Give us victory with our life. And Lord, as, as, as this world is trying to take down fatherhood, knocking us down, just being a man, Lord, we thank you that that's not the case that you say in Scripture. You uplift us. You want us to be honored. And so we thank you today. And we praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Okay, man, congratulations for being a dad. Awesome, awesome.